know, in Corpse on the Cob, Odelia, those of you who know our girl, her mother abandoned her when she was 16. She came home from high school one day and found her mother had moved out. No note, no nothing. And Odelia didn't want to move in with her dad because she was married to this obnoxious woman. So she lived there as long as her savings allowed her to pay the rent. She was only 16. Then she moved in with her dad. Well, she's never heard in 34 years from her mother. The book opens with her father having had a heart attack and died. And through his, uh, some of his effects, she discovers where her mother might be. So she hunts her down and goes out <coughs> to Massachusetts to face her. And this is, has nothing to do with that. But this, is, this is Mike Steele and her talking. She's in Massachusetts. He's in uh, Orange County wondering when the hell she's coming back for work. And, um, and I love, this is my favorite section of the whole book. One of the reasons I carry such a big bag is because I lug so much junk around with me. <laughs> and I left my Blackberry at home. Things like a small bottle of water and a book. Recently, the firm assigned me a Blackberry. Mike Steele had been trying to saddle me with one for two years, <coughs> but until now I had successfully fended him off. I never thought I needed one. After all, I always had my cell phone with me. It was Greg who finally convinced me to say yes to the Blackberry, touting its convenience. So now, besides all the other stuff in my bag, I had a new thing my bob to carry. I spotted the Blackberry, pulled it out, and turned it on. It promptly loaded up both my work and personal emails. Putting the book aside, I dutifully read the work-related emails I'd received since I was last in the office on Thursday. Most of them were from Steele, asking questions and giving me tasks to do when I returned to work on Tuesday. I answered a couple of the questions and received a reply back almost immediately. Steele must be working either from home or at the office, or maybe he was just checking his email at the same time I was. It didn't surprise me. He's one of the people for whom the term crackberry fits. <laughs> Steele's email asked if I was still out of town and had I met my mother yet. I replied, yes and yes. Fast back was the question, happy or disappointed? Mike Steele could type faster with his thumbs than anyone I knew, more than John Newstatter. That's a boss in my office that, my God, I think he types 300 words a minute with his thumbs. Um, this time I didn't get a reply. This time the Blackberry in my hand rang. I thought about leaving it on the chair under a pillow and going upstairs to my room. I could also shut off the contraption and not turn it on again until I reached back to California. The problem with that was he had just called my cell phone, and that I needed to keep on in case Greg or Clark called. With a big sigh, I answered the Blackberry. Okay, Greg, what's up? My boss in California said as soon as I answered. Nothing's up, Steele. Whenever you say something's complicated, it's usually code for disaster on the horizon. It's not, I snapped. It's just that my mother was shocked to see me. Did you call first? No, I did not. My voice strained to hold back the building annoyance. I wanted to surprise her. Is that the smart thing to do with a woman that age? <laughs> I paused just long enough to decide what to say and how to phrase it to keep him off my back. Here's the thing, Steele. Uh-oh, there's another one of your catastrophe-lurking catchphrases. It is not. Tell me what's going on or I'll call Greg and find out from him. I'm not a five-year-old, Steele. Then stop acting like one and tell me what's happening. You've pretty much given away all your tells. Tells? You know, Gray, as in poker, you couldn't bluff your way out of a Burger King. I sighed. Well, in my defense, it wasn't my fault. Oh, shit, he yelled. Don't tell me someone's dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the flavor throughout the whole book. Um,